Near enough a month ago, I put out this video here titled Glasgow Must Start Petition to Relocate Migrants from Greek Islands. And in the petition, there was three SNP councillors, or two councillors to my knowledge, and one from Labour, who had supported the campaign. That being, of course, Graham Auntie White Campbell, who had this to say. To sort of really finish my remarks by saying this, my own experience, I suppose. I'm very confident that the future of Scotland will be a very non-racial and anti-racist country because we are grappling with rejecting an imperialist British viewpoint of what a nation is and what it can be. We're rejecting an ethnocentric definition of what that nation is. We're setting an example of civic nationalism and inclusion, which means that we have a, a national identity which is going to be different. It's not going to be what it is now. We're preparing a future where people can define a Scots person non-racially. But I'm John Letford, SNP, for Mary Hill as a councillor. And John Letford, according to the Glasgow Times, has been interviewed about the petition. SNP councillor Bach's petition to urge more refugees in Glasgow. <laughs> it's just relentless, isn't it? SNP councillor John Letford, councillor for Mary Hill in Springburn, told the Glasgow Times that Glasgow is a city of migrants. <laughs> Right. Whether right from the Highlands, Ireland, or in my case, from the southeast of England, our city has grown and prospered because of her migrants. Our city has grown and prospered because of migration. Wasn't well, that something to behold? What a sight to see, considering the fact Glasgow's got some of the worst poverty levels in the whole of Scotland. <laughs> Homelessness isn't exactly a burning example of a prosperous city, if you, in my opinion, to name a few. But on the bigger picture here, this is rather similar to the talk of Scotland being a, a nation of immigrants. You know, the argument that they apply to America and their attempts to deconstruct it, they're trying to apply to Scotland in many cases. It's somewhat similar here. <laughs> Glasgow is full of immigrants and Scots. <laughs> but of course, it was the immigrants that made Glasgow what it is today and helped it to grow and prosper. It wasn't the Scots. No, 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 because it's a city of immigrants. All those Italians, Jews, Poles and Pakistanis who have made Glasgow their home are Glaswegians now. The fact that you refer to them as Italians, Jews, Poles and Pakistanis quite clearly indicates that they're not Glaswegian nor Scottish. They are in fact the Italians, Jews, Poles and Pakistanis who happen to live in Scotland alongside Scottish people, or in this case Glaswegians. But again, the erasure of who we are as a people in order to supposedly, in theory, accommodate people under the guise of Nambi Pambi inclusive measures, when the reality of the matter is it's a bit more sinister, malevolent and insidious then it really comes across at times. You have to read between the lines of the rainbow sprinkles that they sugarcoat all their crap with. In recent years, they have also been joined by Afghanis, Somalians and other Africans who are now Glaswegians too. <laughs> oh, it's fucking mental. So they're Africans, but they're Glaswegian. So they get a double identity. They get the best of both worlds. They get a homeland that's acknowledged, as well as getting to claim to be Scottish, or in this case, Glaswegian. He added, people do indeed make Glasgow, and Glasgow has been made by her refugees, migrants and asylum seekers. Three terms that have, for the longest time, fair enough, existed, that being refugees, migrants and asylum seekers, but three terms, nonetheless, that have become very popular since at least 2015, since this refugee quote-unquote crisis began. These three terms, these three groups of people have been politicised for nefarious gains. It's rather evident at this point. I mean, all we ever hear is refugees, migrants and asylum seekers, the requests, the calls, the demands, the screams for these people to be let in. They want to remove detention centres, they want safe and legal corridors for them to get here as quick as possible. The constant obsession with immigration, refugees and asylum seekers, this namby-pamby approach to it all entices these people over here. And you can't, in theory, effectively blame these individuals themselves, the ones coming from these countries until they start to act out, which a lot of them do. But before that occurs, they live in shithole countries, they live below the poverty line, so to speak, and the th in theory, they could be coming over here for what could be considered a better life, or attempting to. But the problem with that is that's not our problem. 
you have to put your foot down. They're being invited here by these people. They're being enticed over. They're practically getting the red carpet treatment when they arrive. Then they demand more. And on top of that, what's more in terms of this being politicised, just look at what's been happening for the best part of a month now. We've been hearing to no end about the need to implement anti-racism in our education. We all need to check our privilege because we're all inherently racist. There's systemic and structural barriers and inequalities rampant. We're a rampantly racist country built on the grounds of white supremacy and on the backs of slaves, but yet we want to import more black people into the country year on year. The same people accusing you of being all of the aforementioned are the same people that want to import more people into the country that would immediately fall into the categories of that would, that would be considered oppressed. Isn't it funny that this continuously happens year on fucking year? Isn't it funny that the same people, isn't it funny that the same people that brought the stress are the same people that want more into the country? <laughs> but looking further afield, the situation in Greece today is dire. Again, this is not our problem. Again, this is the fault of the very same politicians who are pandering and bootlicking us about now, the same as the campaigners and the activists, etc. The NGOs went about the Mediterranean Sea, picking these people up and dumping them at detention centres, so, so much so to the point that a lot of these detention centres, not just in Greece's case, but elsewhere, Italy, Germany, etc., became overburdened, overflowed. You've got a bunch of people there that shouldn't be there in the first place, in combination with a bunch, too many people at the one time. Now when Greece wants to remove them from their islands, all of a sudden that becomes our problem? Where was the fuss and the cre where was the fuss and the attention directed at Turkey to take these people in? These individuals were quite content with Turkey keeping them in effectively a holding pen for god knows how many years, in theory until Europe has decided to let them in. There was no problem whatsoever with Turkey holding them in that position for as long as they did. There was no problem with Turkey blocking the uh, the exit point for them to go back to where they came from, forcing them towards the European border when they tried to all burst into Greece. There was no problem with that whatsoever. So in theory with that combined with the fact that we have a bunch of people in these camps that shouldn't be there in the first place, the suggestion is or the solution is to just instead of send them all back to where they came from because half of them should be there, we should just skip the middle man and let them into fucking Scotland. This is why I support the Europe Must Up campaign, a Europe-wide campaign to relocate refugees and asylum seekers from dehumanising, overcrowded camps in the Greek islands across Europe. So again, the re instead of the redistribution of wealth, it's the redistribution of migrants, because that's what the majority of them are. Claiming asylum doesn't make you an asylum seeker. These people know that they can claim asylum and there's a high chance that they will have their claim accepted, because it's been made so damn easy for them, and at this point it's becoming harder to separate and differentiate between a refugee, an asylum seeker and a fucking migrant. They're all one and the same at this point and their political pawns being used by the likes of him. <laughs> Why is it incumbent on us? It's not incumbent on us to take these people in. It never was and it never will be in theory. It shouldn't be. The Syrian resettlement scheme, the SNP's little pet project. Remind me again how many nationalities of people have come in, into this country under that scheme. A hell of a lot more nationalities than just Syrian. <laughs> Glasgow Must Act, the Glasgow branch of Europe Must Act, launched a petition on March the 17th asking the council to provide a shelter for a certain number of refugees currently residing in Greece. And again, with the assumptions, you're assuming that they are refugees purely for, for the fact that they are in an asylum camp or a refugee camp. The bulk of them are African. The bulk of them are chancing their arm at an asylum claim. They come from Middle Eastern and African countries. That does not mean that by default they deserve access to our countries. It's inspired by Berlin, which declared itself ready to accept a similar number of migrants until further notice. So I'm coming on them to prove that they've got a viable claim for asylum if you want to go down that route. You don't just assume. Europe Must Act's petition has more than 100,000 signatures and is bought by 10 MEPs and 160 so-called NGOs, most of whom are funded by the likes of Soros, probably the European Union themselves on the fly, as among, amongst other people. And here's the man of the hour himself, you fucking halfwit. A volunteer for Glasgow Mustock said, I volunteered with an NGO supporting residents of a migrant camp in Greece for two years, both in the field and remotely. So far, 13 NGOs and more than 700 individuals have signed the Glasgow Mustock petition. Councillor John Letford added, he will seek support from the SMP group 
on Glasgow City Council to lobby the Scottish government to offer refugees asylum in Glasgow. You don't need a petition to twist the SNP's arm in this regard because let's not forget that Nicola Thinlips, for all the years that I've been covering Nicola Thinlips, for all the years she's been in power, she's done nothing but talk about the need for more immigration into this country. And considering she doesn't have control over immigration quite yet at this point, stands the reason that they'll look for any loophole possibly. You know, she didn't ask the public about their first batch of 2000 and she quietly imported another 2000. God knows how many more there are now, but I repeat again, the Syrian resettlement scheme quickly turned into something rather different. It was a fraud if you ask me, because there's people from multiple African nations in this country now under the guise of a serene re refugee resettlement scheme. <laughs> How many other Arabic nationalities have we got under the guise of a serene resettlement scheme? Anyway, over 400, uh, sorry, 40,000 human beings are stranded on in limbo. And these 40,000 human beings are there are because they took that decision to go there. How many of those 40,000 human beings were fine in Turkey before they made the trip across to Greece? How many of these 40,000 human beings have only decided to take it upon themselves to come to the European Union or uh, Greek, uh, Greece, sorry, because of people like yourself? How many of these human beings have been enticed because of the indirect as well as in some cases direct invitations? But we can do our bit. The great city of Berlin has shown the way and committed to welcoming 1500. Well, that's great. You mean the lefty activists and the refugee activists, etc., have decided to implement such an initiative. It doesn't mean that the German people are happy with it. And as to my knowledge, it hasn't actually happened yet. On top, of course, of the, what, million plus that entered Germany during the peak of the so-called crisis that was the migrant crisis, quote, unquote. If Glasgow could welcome 500, then across the 23 wards of the city, that would mean that only 20 new Scots would be coming to live and contribute to my ward of Mary Hill. Only 20? John, I'm sure you can do more than that. That's diverse. It was a great strength. Why don't you take them all? Why don't you take all of them and put them in snap bang on your constituency, pal? Why don't you do that? Hmm? Why don't you do that? No, you won't do that. But of course, this crap again about new Scots. This stuff really does irk me more than it irks most people, I think, because every time I hear that, it proves fundamentally the point I've been making for the longest time, that they are erasing who we are. Anyone can come to Scotland and be Scottish. They're new Scots. They're just as Scottish as you or I, despite DNA tests probably proving otherwise. But, you know, can't say that's far right. We can do this. We must do this. We must do this. Why? Why must we do this? Scots are renowned the world over as migrants, whether that be in the mountains of America, the plains of Canada, or the fields of Jamaica. So because Scots historically migrated elsewhere, that justifies migration into Scotland today. That reminds me of Nicola Thinlip's article on the, in the Evening Times, sorry. Today is designated by the United Nations as World Social Justice Day writes Thin Lips in a piece for the Evening Times, noting that the globalist organisation is dedicated this year's theme to promoting mass migration under the title of Workers on the Move. The same United Nations, of course, who had this to say in 2012, that the European Union should undermine national homogeneity, says UN Chief Peter Sutherland, the same Peter Sutherland who created the basis for the migrant compact that we now know has been signed, sealed and delivered under the quiet night, so to speak. So bear that in mind. Uh, with studies showing that the majority of Scots surveyed are keen to have tighter restrictions on migrants post-Brexit, the left-wing le left wing leader, uh, far left, acknowledged her message is unlikely to be warm receive, uh, warmly received, but goes on to insist migration is an issue which must be addressed with urgency and honesty for the sake of Scotland's economy and our communities. We all know of people who left Scotland to seek new opportunities, marking, making their mark on whatever country they ca came to call home, writes Sturgeon, pointing to the existence of several different settlements named Glasgow in the US. <laughs> oh, well, that justifies it then. That fucking justifies it. <laughs> we can help those in flight by offering refuge. It's just never ending. I will now seek support from the SNP group and council to ask the UK to allow Glasgow to offer that refuge. Our city story never ends. Please offer your support. <laughs> fucking Jesus, man. Peace.